Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM24 Early Access Fiorentina save which is very quickly turning into the January transfer window data save because this is part three of the January transfer window where we're signing players through data Let's dive into it and have a look. So first up, not chatting around data, but we are into the Champions League uh, knockout bit. Playoff bit. Yeah, it wasn't convincing. It was 21st, but eight, eight games played, three wins, two draws, three losses. Um, we narrowly lost to Arsenal and Red Bull Leipzig through this last bit of the stage. Both of those, I think, got through in this bit. Arsenal followed for the fifth. Red Bull likes it by 14. So two very good teams for them there. In the league, one point off Juventus. But having played the same amount of games, we are level on points of Lazio with a game in hand. So still in a very good position in the league. And in the Italian Cup, in the quarterfinals, we've been drawn against Salernitana. So that's not going too badly either now as a little recap because i said we would miss a few days from the last time we have gone forward we've confirmed the signings of Cittadini at center back uh, Sestich at center back and Pirozzi as what i didn't realize very very handily is that he plays left wing back as well so good cover for both of our full backs positions um, and the right midfield spot sorry that's what i was going to say and Timothy Weir has joined on loan as well Echeverry has gone on, out on loan to join um uh, Brianza, that's who he's gone out to join there. Two appearances, no goals for them just yet, but hopefully can get some good game time and good goals in. On the outs, we confirm the deals for Sionchu leaving and Dodo as well. So Dodo left, that prompted us to go and find right midfielders. We brought in Timothy Weir and Pierosa. Sionchu left, we prompted to go and find centre-back, so we brought in Citadin, uh, Citadini and Sestich as well at the back. So you're pretty much up to date with where the club or the... the squad stands at the moment there's been a bit of an uproar because we haven't got enough holding midfielders so we may go and look for a holding midfielder today as well as well as at the moment all i think we need is a goalkeeper but that is dependent on what going out as well so we'll have to see what happens with that one but i don't think the squad actually needs a holding midfielder when you think we've got zappa martel uh jansen uh, Amrabat, Solbakken and, and Amatucci who can all play there but the, qu the squad think we're lacking a little bit in holding midfield so we'll go and look at some data um, for holding midfielders see what we can find, see who's looking good, see if we can find a bargain but first off, well first off what we actually need to do is take part in deadline day because it is actually today so we will take part in it, see what happens um, the whole screen goes yellow, it's lovely we, we're used to that now, but I don't think we're going to be spending 146 million on Florin Verts, although he's a very good player. Can't see that happening. We've also been linked to Arthur Tatey for 108 million pounds, and we've been linked to Manu Kone, who is very good, for 66 million pounds. But I sort of think we can get someone a little bit better than Manu Kone. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of interest in carrying this on as a data series, so let me know down below if we do get enough people. And, and enough likes on the video. I don't know, let's go for, I don't know, 30 likes on the video and we'll carry this series on as a data series. If we do that, I will add in a lot more leagues around Europe so we get a lot more data around this um, that we can that we can utilise because it does help. The more leagues you have loaded, the more accurate data you get, the more it, it's easier to use this sort of approach to go through it. But yeah, lots of rumours happening, as you can see. Uh, lots going on. There's offers from different people. Someone's been released. Oh, Roberto Soriano got released on a free on deadline day. That's a bit harsh. Bless him. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're playing very well. We're playing Hellas Verona tomorrow. That won't be in this episode. In the meantime, though, I have been setting up a goalkeeping sort of panel that I've been looking for. And it's come down to five people in here. So what we have been looking for in here... Someone that can play naturally as a goalkeeper, obviously. Minimum of 15 appearances. Um, at most has conceded one goal per 90 minutes. I'd like to lower that, so we may do that in a minute. Um, at most has zero mistakes leading to a goal. And has expected is, is expected to have prevented at least 15 goals this season. So that's not too bad. If we drop this to under a goal a game, there's only two people left and we're not going to be able to get either of them. Because if we have a look, Unai Simon is 48 to 61 million pounds and is Athletic Bilbao's first choice goalkeeper. And Lucas Chevalier is 36 to 42 million pounds and is Lille's first choice goalkeeper. So both of those, I think, are slightly out of the equation. So if we go back to max or conceded per 90 minutes is at most one goal a game. 
that's all this is showing us, right? Conceded per 90, one equals at most. They're generally conceding one goal a game. We have Unai Simon, Chevalier in there again. Then we have Nicola Cavillana, who wants to leave the club from the Croatian. I mean, we're only looking for a backup, so this might not be too bad. Nick and Cavillana, 22 years old, 325k to 3.2 million. Um, he has made 80 appearances in his career for Locomotive where he plays currently. He's conceded 21 in 26 in the league, 11 clean sheets. They're not doing too badly there. He's conceded 0.81 goals per 90 minute with a pass completion rate of 72%. But generally, we pay out from the back, so the pass completion isn't too bad. Um, we've got Andre Lunev from the Azeri Premier League division. What? Where's that? Azerbaijan. Okay, 24 conceded in 36, 17 clean sheets. A good average rating. Is playing in a pretty poor division. Um, I would suggest he's 33 as well and I mean you could bring in an old player as a backup if we look at he's not playing internationally so that's okay and he's not played any non-competitive games so 49 appearances 40 conceded 24 clean sheets uh, he has a conceded per 90 of 0.82 so it is under a goal a game which he's generally doing which again really isn't too bad and then we have Vlad Mutsu who is a 29-year-old Romanian goalkeeper, 40k to 375k, does look to be incredibly poor compared to all the other players we've looked at, playing for FC Hermstad in uh, the Romanian First Division, 17 conceded in 20 games, and he has a con conceded per 90 of 0.85, so not too bad. Out of all of these, I'd probably be leaning towards Nicola Cavallina. He's the youngest at 22, He's playing in a half-decent league. He'd probably be more than happy to join as a backup. Um, yeah, and he's, he's done okay for his age. He's six foot four. We haven't scouted him enough. We're not going to have time to scout him. Um, ideally, I think I'd like to have someone maybe a little bit younger. Uh, if we just knock the appearances down and the expected goals prevented down, let's have a look, see who else is in here. There was another name that popped up there, Ivor Pandur. Six foot two from the Eredivisie, 24 years old, 7.4 to 9 million pounds. Uh, yeah, not bad. Not not too bad, I guess. Um, I have also set up, just as I remember, I've set up this uh, goalkeeper panel. So now it goes goalkeeper, weirdly, it goes goalkeeper, striker, midfielder, defender. But I might reorganise it in the future. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got expected goals prevented. So this is, for example, Lucas Chevalier has prevented 17.81 Goal attempts that should be a goal from going in. He has conceded 18 goals. He's conceding 0.72 per 90 minutes. He has an expected save ratio of 88%. And his actual save ratio is 86%. So you could argue that he should be making... The, if, if this is higher than this, then he's doing very well. The closer they are together, the better. So 86 to 88 is very good because he's his actual save ratio is 86%. And the expected save ratio that he's going to be having is 88. So it's only 2% difference, which isn't too bad. Uh, Unai Simon has 5% difference. Uh, Vlad Miotu has 5% difference. Nicola Cavallina has 11%, no, 9% difference. Uh, Andre Lunev has a 4% difference. And Eredivisie Ivor Pandur has a 5% difference. So, you know, that could... Yeah, that could make him quite a viable option. Um, the biggest difference then was Nicola Cavallina, which is annoying because he's the one I was potentially looking to go for. So I find that that is that's quite concerning that he has that. The saves he's making are nine percent off in uh, twenty six appearances. So yeah, that is a little bit of a an alarm bell potentially. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It, goalkeepers are always harder to judge, um, to be honest. Let's take out the expected goals prevented, because that will open up the list, yeah, a lot more. And we'll have a look at who has what save, the save ratio, so 100%. Wow, he's expected to save 97. He's saved 100%. In 18 appearances, he's saved 100%. His save ratio is 100%. Excuse me? 30 years old. Surely that means he's not conceded a goal. He's conceded 16 and 18. I guess the save ratio is shots you're expected to save. But that would be that one. This guy's got 100-100. 100. 
He's conceded per 90. He's averaging one goal conceded per 90. David Jensen at six foot five, 32 years old. Oh, that must be a little bit bugged. Surely. Surely that is a little bit bugged. But we've got loads of people in here now. So let's up our games to 20. We can potentially get a much better a ratio here and you can see the top two have already disappeared there's no more hundred percent there's no more hundred percent so i'm going to suggest that is a little bit of a bug but have we got anybody that that well the top guy vino Barcelet in the jamaican premier league his save percentage is actually better than his expected save percentage uh, at 25 years old i'm probably not going to be bringing him in i would probably suggest that the jamaican premier league is far too low too low down to be honest but yeah, I wish you could do like a comparison of this to be like, give me a number to say that it's either above one or just below one. But uh, a quick scout down. Let's have a look to see. We've got 82 to 86, 83. I mean, the expected, your actual save ratio, the higher it is, the better. So, I mean, 86 to 88. Again, Lucas Chevalier, we can't really get him in. 84 to 87, only 3%. For Nicholas Heidel in the Austrian Premier Division at six foot two, 23 years old, he might cost a little bit. Let's have a quick. I mean, would he be happy to move as a backup though? Ask agent about availability. We're interested. Uh, between 15 to 19 million, and he want a wage of 45 grand. That's a little bit much for a backup, if you ask me. So. 83 to 92, that's a huge difference there. He should, his expected save percentage was 92%, and he's only got a save percentage of 83. Not uh, That is not endearing, to be honest. 81, 90, 82, 89. Yeah, you can see as this drops off, there is quite a big ratio here to say what's happening. So we're probably looking as a save percentage somewhere above at least 80 and then someone that gets close to their actual percentage. 83, 88, 5% isn't too bad, that's Unai really nice, Simon. 84 to 89 for Razvan Sava, but again, in the Romanian Premier League, we, we, they are gonna be cheap. They are gonna be cheap if they're coming from that sort of division. Um, and then, yeah, we don't want anyone like that. I'm trying to think, what could we put in to save, to, or to get rid of people that are in pretty rubbish leagues? But Vladimir Mutu is here, again, I know he's 29 and his actual physical attributes and mental attributes look pretty rubbish. But if you look at the numbers, he has prevented and expected 15.54 goals. He's got a save ratio pretty close to his expected save ratio and he is conceding less than one goal a game. He could, he could be the guy. I mean, this who's this? Noah Atabulo. He's prevented 12.95 goals a game. He's conceding 0.6 goals per 90 minutes. He's got a ratio at just 5%. And he's got a very good average rating over 20 appearances. 41,500 from the Bundesliga means he'll probably be quite expensive. 23 million. Uh, you don't really want to undervalue a goalkeeper, do you? But I sort of feel like if we sell Lunin and need a first choice, he could be the guy to bring in. That's really not a bad thing there so uh again we're dropping in 81 to 90 again the romanian league has got bloody so many well good performing goalkeepers jumping reach is really good he's 24 100 so i mean this is more like a sort of backup goalkeeper that i would expect to bring in he's playing well in romania he's playing for Stau bucharest who's one of the better teams out there i mean Again, like let's sort by expected goals prevented. Chevrolet, Sumon, Mutio, Lunev, we all we'll know about them. Ivor Panda, we've looked at. Tubolo, Kevin Trapp is up there. Don't like that ratio though. Nicholas Heidel, come back to again. He's in there. Razvan Sav. Uh, Mori Diawa is 8% off and 11% off, 9% off. That's a lot of, that's a big difference there. Another 8% here from Fructal. He's prevented 10 games, 25 years old. Again, he's not bad. It is, goalkeepers are more difficult. Goalkeepers are much more difficult to to find what you're going, what what we're going with. Um, I really hope that saved my goalkeeper bit. Yeah, it did. I'm going to save custom. I'm just going to uh, export current view, I think is what I want to do. Uh, CLF data, FM24, scouting, save. There we go. Lovely. 
Um, and then to avoid confusion, I'm going to delete. Oh, no, crap. No, 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 not that one. I want to go to custom FM23 and delete that one so that I don't then get confused. And I'm actually just going to bring that one back in. Right, there we go. So, um, Pico Bank Polski. So that's the Polish first division. 77 to 88, 11%, 11.09 expected goals yeah so we're dropping into a little bit lower territory here than i would like uh, 79 to 88 conceding less than a goal a game i mean who's got the best ratio of conceding goals then someone in the cypriot spanish first division is ratty expected goals prevented none <laughs> okay so he's conceded nine when he probably should have conceded nine he's got an expected save percentage of zero and he has saved zero uh, 81 to 88, 0.55, A McKay in the Serie C. He's 31, so absolutely. Let's put an age on it. Let's. Put, we're, we're looking for a backup goalkeeper, right? So I think 26 and below would be a decent age for a backup goalkeeper. And we will go back to the expected goals list. So Nicola Cavallina, was he? Oh, yeah, he's, that, he's the same guy. He's the same one. Let's have a quick chat to his agent and just see that we're keen. Um, 3.2 million, so he's probably got his release fee there, so I don't mind that. He would be deputies to the first choice, but hopes to play in the occasional match. Would want a long-term contract. Um, his wages are too high. Okay, they're not going to bring his wages down. So, well, consider Cavalina. We'll consider... Oh, we'll consider Cavalina. Let's go back into players in range. So, Cavalina is second on the list when we put an age range on it. He is 9% off his ratio. Ivor Panda is here again, six foot two, 24 years old, 7.4 to 9 million. Let's see what they say. Between Somewhere between 7.4 and 9. Serve as the deputy, and he'd want 27. Okay, so he doesn't want too much wage. And he would take a little bit of a wage reduction as well. Now, the difficulty is we obviously haven't sold a goalkeeper to. Well, we have, but it was a really old guy who's not going to really do much for us. But, yeah, you would sort of think that. The better you can have a less conceded goals. I mean, let's look at Francis Azohu. We don't know too much about him. Unknown value, 26 years old, Nigerian goalkeeper. Yeah. Mark Gregorian. Again, not too sure he's going to do much playing in the Austria Vienna League, not even the Austrian Premier Division. Franco Israeli, the Uruguayan. Or Franco Israel, Israeli, Israel. Not sure how you pronounce that, but. 24 years old, small wage at 10.5, 120k to 1.2. He's actually not looking too bad, Frank. Israel. What's his percentage? His percentage is 14%. No, we're not going to bring him in. Uh, Nicholas Heidel, Razvan Sava has a 5% and he's predicted to have sold 11.5. 22 years old, 400k. Again, it's playing for Cluj, the best, one of the best teams, or if not the best team in Romania. A good average rating and stuff. He would be happy to be a backup. So we've got quite a few potential choices here. And then expected saves. Look at all these people that are wildly underperforming how much they were expected to save. Look at this guy. George Selvi. I'd be sticking well away from him. He has an expected goals prevented minus 3.08. Bloody hell. That's absolutely crazy i do think expected goals presented is probably the best barometer and nine percent i think it might be cavalina who we go for do we just pay his release fee and bring him in he's not non-eu is he so no i think we're going to be fine so we'll get that one done and in that's the goalkeeper so he's happy to be a backup goalkeeper, so we'll get that agreed. Uh, I think we said we would lower his wage a little bit. So let's go 21, 150, no yearly wage rise. Uh, international appearances. If you make 10 international appearances, you can get 30 grand. There we go. Um, oh, he's rejected it. So he's, well, there you go. I think his agent was like, no, we want that. We want that fee. And so Cavalina's not going to join. Um, so we are... Who was the other one we were looking at? I think I asked to scout someone. Ivor Pander. 7.4 to 9.4 million. It's a, it's a lot more money for a backup goalkeeper. Razvan Sava was another one, wasn't it? 22-year-old Romanian. He's got two caps for Romania. 400k. 
He's got. A, he has a minimum fee release cost of four hundred k. What? Sava has a minimum fee release clause to this value. What value? An agent fee in terms of a sign fee will be played by the club. Yeah, what's his... Well, what's his value? What's his minimum fee release clause? I'm going to go for 850k. We'll go 850k. He's coming up pretty well in here. I think we spoke to him, didn't we? Did we speak to his agent? Ask agent about availability. We're interested. Oh, he's got 2.3 million of his minimum fee release clause. Um, lower his wages. There you go. He wants a really cheap wage, actually. So we'll see what they come back with. If not, we might just pay his minimum fee release clause. But, yeah, it's a shame that it didn't work out for... Um, oh, no, Evil Panda is the other one we're looking at. I'm getting all confused now with the goalkeepers I'm looking at. So the bid was rejected, so I think we're just going to go straight in at his release fee. Um, and get this one done. Uh, Nuri Alip has been scouted now and finished. 7 million is 10.5 million. We don't need another centre-back at the moment. Uh, same with Igor Diviev. We don't need that. Bruno gets a coaching report, which is lovely. Um, yeah, let's go and have a look then for a holding midfielder now by doing some more data. And we'll set this one up because I haven't got a data thing set up for holding midfielders. So we want a holding midfielder between the ages of... I don't know, let's go 15 and 28. I don't mind if they're going to come in as a starter. And right, so let's go and have a look on here then. So what do we want? We want pass completion rate, definitely. That's got to be very, very high. We'll sort by that straight away. We're definitely going to get a good number of appearances in here. So again, this may be a bit of a longer episode, but appearances this year, 20 appearances. There's got to be a good number of people that have played 20 times who we can find. There's a good number in there. We'll drop it down to 18 just to start. So stats, chalkboard, passes, uh, pass completion ratio has to be up at like 80%. And then we're going to go for a bit more of a sort of playmaking attack, uh, the holding midfielder, I think. So let's go passes, um, key passes per 90. Is there anyone that's going to make two key passes per 90? You'll see when I start, I just chuck them in at a sort of random barometer and then I'll move it around. Um, as we go assist per 90 minutes let's get someone that's creating at least one assist a game if there's anyone on there no so straight away let's go for someone that's assisting once every two games no again okay but is there someone doing that with key passes at one there is one player Ruben Neves in the Saudi Premier League well how much do you reckon he cost 48 to 58 million pounds bloody hell um is his contract expiring? No, we've got another year till his contract expires. Okay, so Ruben Nevers is the benchmark at the moment. But if we drop pass completion down to like 75%, it's still only Ruben Neves. 70%. Still only Ruben Neves. Let's drop appearances down to 15. Still only Ruben Neves. So Ruben Neves is really good, people. Ruben Neves is really good. Um, ideally, though, let's take out... I don't want to take out. Let's take out the assists. We'll leave key passes in. Two key passes a game. I want that pass completion rate to be much better than 70%. 80%. Stats on the chalkboard. Passes. Let's go for open play key passes per 90. So we've got key passes per 90. Two. Open play key passes per 90. Two. So that then takes away. Oh, it leaves us with one in Serie B. Okay, um, that takes away set pieces, which gets rid of Ruben Neves, as you can see. But Juan Gonzalez. Now, we've looked at this guy before. He's come up twice. He was at Barcelona. That's very interesting. We'll give him a scout. He's doing. He seems to be doing very, very well then. Uh, so, open play key passes, 1.5 per 90. That gets a lot more people in. Ryan Gravenberch is there. Unbelievable stuff. Absolutely love him. Let's get in a few more, uh, a few more things. Distance covered uh, per ninety minutes. Let's go. Got to be running. You've got to be running. You've got to be running. Chalkboard uh, passes. Oh no. Let's go for tackles. Actually, we want to go interceptions per ninety. So we need someone that's very good defensively as well. Two interceptions per ninety. That's given us a little list, isn't it? Amrabat is in there. So again, just to let you know. Go to exclude, untick the box where it says your team's name players and they will appear in your search. So Amrabat 
is doing everything that we want all these people to do, which is lovely. Uh, next to him, we could have Lamin Fafana from Syria CC. Not too sure he's the one. Or again, Joan Gonzalez propped up, which is really, really interesting. We're paying Amrabat 100 grand a week. Jesus Christ, we're getting robbed. Um, I do think distance covered is important, but I don't know how much a central midfielder should run. Okay, it doesn't seem to be making a difference because I dropped that two kilometers and it's kept. I've taken it out and it's the same three people. So, okay, let's go a 75% pass completion. Let's go interceptions can be one and a half a game. And I'm wondering if we can do chalkboard passes. Um, progressive passes per 90. Let's put that up at two. Yeah, okay, we've got a few. We've got a list of people here. We've got a list of people, which is good. Uh, let's see if we can get it to 20 appearances so that we get a bit more of a average thing and see if we can nap that pass completion up. Let's see if we can go back to 80. Don't tell me it's just going to be grab and birch. Right, it's not. We have got a list of a few people. So, in Serie B, we have Bresciani, 25 years old, 150k. Not looking too bad. It would be another Italian for a homegrown player as well. I mean, Gravenberch is there, which is just ah, oh, amazing. I'd love to bring him in. He is absolutely superb. Uh, let's sort by average rating just to start with. So, Bresciani, Amrabat's up there. Lewis Cook, English counts as non-EU, so we can't have him or Warrington from Everton, who doesn't look too bad, to be honest. And G. Dalbon. No. Oh, I've just realised something we've done. We've not done. I've put is natural, competent to play at holding midfielder. That gives us a few more options as well. So we may be able to up these. Open play key passes back to two. Only one player. Lovro Mayer in the Bundesliga. Five foot ten. So not the tallest. 27 year old from Croatia. 51 to 81 million pounds. It's probably a little bit. Again, I could go and get Colo Moane for 66 million. So I don't think we're going to be spending that much on someone like you. Let's knock the appearances down to 15, see if that makes a difference. There is Joan Gonzalez is in there again. Bloody hell. Okay. Uh, let's go 1.75 progressive passes per match. Still only those two. 1.5 open play, 1.5. So this is sort of a... It's, we're sort of lowering it to an all-round functional player. I guess if we added in tackles as well, then that would allow us to get someone that covers absolutely everything. Tackles... Um, tackles per 90 tackles completion ratio yeah tackle oh, you got to win half your tackles that you're going for 15 players you got to win 70% of the tackles that you're going for 11 players bloody hell with some good tacklers in here 80% of the tackles you're going for right okay that's got this list down Randy and Tekka and Tika 27 years old Democratic Republic of Congo has he got a second nationality Yes, French, so he wouldn't count as non-EU, which would be nice. For Vallecano, 19.5 million, that's not bad. 27 years old isn't too bad. Um, this play I'm not expecting this player to come in and start, that's the only thing. Stanko Juric is a new player on the list, 28. Some good attributes, but is currently injured for two weeks, so not ideal. Um, did we look at Roberto, Roberto Bianco? No, we didn't, but um, no, not liking the look of him. I mean, Gravenberch is the key one, right? Um, okay, let's go 75% of your tackles have got to be done. Anyone else on this list? Uh, Ricardo Bergio, absolutely not. You can tell from the from the eye test. That's always the final one is the eye test. Tony Frook. Tony Frook, 23 years old. Croatia have a number of really good youngsters, don't they? Um... I think it's going to be... In fact, he actually doesn't make this list when I've upped that. If I up tackles complete to 75, he doesn't make the list. Joan Gonzalez, or whatever his name was. There he is, yeah. He makes it when he, you take off the tackling a little bit. I sort of feel like we could bring him in. Would that placate the player's need for depth? Potentially. 5.2 million to 6.4. He is only 22, so he should, in theory, get better. Let's ask the agent and be like, we're keen. Uh, 5.2 to 6.4 million. Uh, would provide competition for places. 
Want a wager 22 to 30. Would fair option a central midfielder. Look, I'm 20k. We'll give you a 20k wage. Let's have a go. And just see what we can do. So we'll go 5 million. You want 1 million after 50 games and then we'll give you 15%. Um, I've got nothing against that. I've got nothing against that. Um, as I said, at the end of the season, you get a lot more data to play with. And it's a lot easier to go through and do things like this. But yeah, we've potentially got a goalkeeper and a holding midfielder coming in through data, which is good. Uh, Razvan Sava. So this is the goalkeeper. Back up. Yep. Happy with that. 19. We'll give you 18, 19k. Um, what's with this international malarkey? Uh, 10. And we'll give you 19. How about that? You want 22 and a half. We'll give you 20. And after 10, we'll give you 25 and a half. <sighs> we'll give you 25 after five international games. Okay. I'm not losing another goalkeeper by that. Uh, no, you're not going to loan him back. Reject that. Uh, Gonzalez has been accepted and they want him back, so we'll reject that one as well. Start negotiations. Uh, you will be a squad player and you're not going to play as that. Squad player is happy. He put all those other things in to try and confuse us. 20 grand is what we accepted, but you'll want a bit more because of that yearly wage rise being removed. So he started at 25.5, so if we can get him under that without a yearly wage rise, I'm going to be very, very happy. 24. 24 and a half. 25. Am I going to balls this up? 25. There we go. He's happy with 25. Right, it looks like our business is going to be done um, with minimal money spent. Uh, Manasar has submitted a transfer request. Um, you know, there's some discussions going on. I think Roma want him. I think Roma want Malang Sar. Let's go and have a little look. Um, he's been a bit of a disappointment, Malang Sar. So if I can get any sort of a profit for him, then uh, then I will. So ask the agent. Um, why not? Let's go and have a look. There's people out there that do want him. Reluctant to make an offer while the asking price is so high. Looking to generate funds. We paid eight million for him. And I'm, what am I asking for? I can't remember what I'm asking for now. Transfer. Um, a thirteen and a half. I'm asking. Let's just ask for ten. Let's just get ten million. That's a little bit of profit, isn't it? Let's just get ten million. Offer him out. See if someone bites for ten million. Where? Oh, Udinese make loan offer. Mandatory future three three point two, with more instalments would make it six point seven. No, give us five and five, and then you've got a deal. Three point two and three point two. No, make it five, and a few more instalments. Five, and you've got yourself a deal. No, oh, I shouldn't have rejected it because you can negotiate into a transfer offer. Damn it. Uh, Malang Sar, hire an intermediary. No, I just want him to move to Roma, to be honest. Roma are looking to generate funds, so that's probably not going to happen. So we've signed the goalkeeper, uh, Sava, who is actually under 22, so we don't need to register him at the moment. It would be great if you can chat to him, please, Amrabat. And uh, Joe Gonzalez joins at under 22 as well, and we'll get Mauritius to come and just say welcome in. Right, let's continue on. And there we go. Transfer deadline day is done. The January transfer window where we've used data only is finished. And uh, I'm going to suggest we're probably some of the busiest teams in Syria. Uh, the wage expenditure, we are up to eight, so we're outperforming our wage budget in the league table. And yeah, biggest spenders, £30 million. Most players in seven. I'd never normally bring in seven players in a January transfer window, but I think because I'm using this as a sort of demo for the data and how I use it, then it was worth it going out there and doing it, I think. so. Uh, but yeah, about 10. So we actually got rid of more players than we bought in, uh, but £30 million spent. I'll be interested to know how much did we bring in in January in terms of sales. So January was starting from here. So four and a half million, 4.8 million. Uh, let's not count that one. Two loans at 300K each. So 4.8 plus three would be 5.1, 5.4. Uh, 35 and a half million plus 18 would be, oh my God, that's gonna test my brain on today. 35, that'd be 39, 43. 53 million we bought in and we spent in January we spent so it's 53 gotta remember that write that down because my memory is absolutely shocking it's around 53 million I think we got I think it was more than that but uh, 7 11 and a half 16 and a half 22.7 
30, 32, 37, rising to 38, potentially. So in January, using data, we have made a profit of 15 million pounds. Oh, I'm happy. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Hopefully the squad isn't too bad. Hopefully the club realise we have brought in a holding midfielder, even though I know that sometimes it's a little bit bugged. Disappointed with the lack of effort made to strengthen a squad in defensive midfield. Oh, well, we'll see how that goes. Um, no one made a bid of 13 and a half million. We've given Enzola a new contract and Noah is happy with a bit more of his playing time, which is good. Right, we've got the rest of the season to crack on with, so I'll play a bit more of this. We'll come back later on in the season, I think, to go through uh, to have a couple of games. Maybe Lazio. We'll see how the Champions League goes, but maybe we'll come back to play Lazio a day after my birthday in 2025. Excellent. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying this series, please do leave a like. It's the best way to show me that you want it to continue. Uh, subscribe if you're new. We're very close to 9,000 subscribers, edging close to 10,000 overall, which is great. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.